Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. I'm Watto. I wander about. That's Kim. Say hello, Kim. Hello, Kim. She wanders about as well. Today we're going to discover Rithin in North Wales. It is said that it's the most charming small town in North Wales. So we're going to see if that's true. Let's go. Oh, we're starting our wander in this rather charming little park. There's a little playground over the way there for the kiddies. And we're just going to have a little look around this park first before we head off into the town. It's a cracker little lake. The only problem is there's not a lot of water in it. I guess we haven't had a lot of rain, so that's why the levels are low. But it is a beautiful little lake. You can walk all along the river there. That goes up into Castle Park as well. We're not going to do that today because we are going to discover what's going on in the town. But this is where we're starting, so we thought we'd give you a look first. All right, young man. Well, before we head off into the town, we just want to give a massive shout out to a brilliant couple with a brilliant YouTube channel, and that is Rachel and Wills at Postgarden a Point. So if you haven't already, I'm sure most of you have, get across to their channel, check out their videos. As far as travel vloggers go, they are the bizzo. Give them some love, subscribe to their channel if you haven't already. You won't be disappointed. Rith in jail has been a house of correction where vagabonds and the unemployed were put to work and stood at the bottom of Gluid Street since 1654. When it's open, you can explore all its nooks and crannies, and even spend time in the condemned man's cell. Unfortunately, when we visited, it was closed due to being previously flooded, but never mind. Be prepared for a short, sharp climb from here as you head up into the town. This magnificent half-timbered old courthouse was built in 1421 to replace a building burnt down by Welsh freedom fighter Owain Glyndowt. Now it's the hub of the community, hosting displays about the building's history and many exhibitions. Well, Castle Street's got plenty of old buildings, the best of which is this one. I'll attempt to pronounce it, Nancluid Idre. Tell me if it's wrong in the comments. Well, this is actually the oldest timbered townhouse in Wales and dates from around about 1435 and has been continually occupied for more than five centuries. And this house was named after Sir John Trevor and is called Sir John Trevor House. He was a speaker of the House of Commons from 1685 to 1695. It's been a lawyer's chambers, an antique shop, a schoolhouse, and he's now a private dwelling. Well, Rithin Jail isn't all it seems to be. That's probably because it's a castle, you idiot. Although it's quite impressive with its red sandstone, that was only actually built in 1826. The much older castle dates from 1277 and is underneath us. You can see remnants of it as you walk around this rather nice garden. Well, I've just seen something white flash straight in front of me. So I think there are ghosts here. I can feel it in the bones. Okay, well, if that's the case, just keep your eyes open when you're walking around, folks. Like I said, Rithin Castle is now a hotel and a spa, so you can come and stay here, you can visit, you can get treatments, do what you like. And was only finished built in 1826. But the older castle is from 1277 and is in this wonderful little garden that we're walking around now. Like you see there, some of the original walls still left. I sort of stood on what would have been the old ramparts and that's the main building there behind me watch out for those ghosts the 
did you see any? There's a little artist's impression there to give you an idea of what the castle may have looked like in medieval times. Right, now we've had a little walk around the castle. Let's go see what the rest of the town has to offer. You do get a great view of the Cluidian Hills from here. Not a bad setting for a castle. Built in 1827, this is the oldest chapel in town. That was Crown House. It used to be owned by several members of the gentry. It also used to be a pub called the Crown Pub and a butcher shop. Currently the library, that building behind me, used to be the courthouse. Built in 1785, and the last court sat here in 1974. Did continue as a magistrate's court right the way up to 1986. But nowadays, the worst sentence that is handed out from here is a fine for taking your books back late. Plenty of places to stop and get something to eat. Let's just come down the bottom end of the town and station walk. Past these lovely terraced houses. We popped into the craft centre for a little nosy about. This is the most important applied art centre in Wales. It's got three galleries, maker's studios, a shop and a cafe, and a busy programme of talks, events and workshops. We enjoyed looking at these glass sculptures. Oh yes, and there's a house full of teddies. Another great feature, I think, especially for people who want to learn stuff about the town and what have you. You've got little spy holes everywhere. And if you have a look in. It gives you a view. Very good. All right, up until 1991, local farmers in the area used to meet up in the town for their livestock markets. And they now meet out of town. And the building behind me is still a marketplace, but it's now like a market for little artisan traders and such like. It was a beautiful building. The first written town hall was built in 1663 and was actually in St Peter's Square. That was demolished and replaced by this building in 1863. St Peter's Square. And we're just going to head down to the church, St Peter's, and have a look in there. St Peter's Church in Brithin is one of Denbyshire's characteristic twin nave churches. Decorated timber roofs were added in the 16th century and the tall spire, which seems to follow you around as you walk around the town, was a result of a Victorian restoration. Just behind me there are the almshouses down here at the back of the church. Really nice. These gates were made in 1727 by the Davis brothers from Wrexham. Well done, lads. We're back out onto St Peter's Square from the church. This is Tom Price's memorial. Thomas Maldwin Price was one of the most talented racing drivers of his generation. 27-year-old Tom was killed when a safety marshal ran in front of his car at the 1977 South African Grand Prix. This bronze relief by local sculptor Neil Dalrymple was unveiled on the 11th of June 2009, which would have been Tom's 60th birthday.
Let's mount up. Howdy, ma'am. <laughs> well, I hope you've enjoyed that little walk around Ritten, <laughs> discovering a charming Welsh market town. Oh. They're not wrong. If you have, then you know what to do. Give us a big thumbs up, because it helps us out. Subscribe to the channel if you can, and we'll see you on the next one. Say goodbye, Rach. Bye, Rach. Say goodbye, Wells. Bye, Wells. Say goodbye, Ken. Bye. <laughs> Bye, Ken. <laughs>